As over 2,000 cheered their arrival at Love Field, the Kennedy Motorcade headed out on a 10-mile motorcade through Dallas. Reporters and photographers rode in buses and cars several hundred feet behind the president. Nearly half the population of Dallas, more than 150,000, turned out to see him. There were no demonstrations or incidents, and the president's reception exceeded all expectations. As the motorcade turned into a city park known as Dealey Plaza, reporters relaxed as the crowds became smaller. Rounding the corner onto Elm Street at 12.30, reporters heard gunfire, but were too far away to know what happened. It's not known for sure, but it is believed that President Kennedy has been shot. Secret Service drivers raced out of Dealey Plaza to nearby Parkland Hospital five minutes away. Reporters continued on to the luncheon at the Dallas Trademark only to learn that President Kennedy was taken to the hospital instead. Amid the confusion, rumors started flying. Police and reporters swarmed over Dealey Plaza and the Texas School Book Depository. 42 minutes after the shooting, investigators found three empty bullet shells at the sixth floor window. Ten minutes later, they found a rifle nearby. Meanwhile, several miles away in suburban Oak Cliff, someone shot and killed Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett. Most reporters covering the Kennedy assassination were unable to follow investigators on what would ordinarily be a major news story. At 1.33, Assistant Press Secretary Malcolm Kilduff confirmed the rumors with official word that President Kennedy died one half hour earlier. John F. Kennedy died at approximately one o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. He died of gunshot wound in the brain. I have no other details regarding the assassination of the president. As the bulletins of the president's death raced around the world, Dallas police closed in on the Texas Theater in Oak Cliff, where a man had been acting suspiciously. Lee Harvey Oswald, a 24-year-old employee of the Texas School Book Depository, was arrested and taken to the Dallas police station within 90 minutes of the assassination. While Oswald sat waiting to be questioned, this cream-colored hearse bearing the body of John F. Kennedy left Parkland Hospital for Dallas Love Field and the return trip to Washington. Thirty minutes later, on board Air Force One and in front of three pool reporters, Texas federal judge Sarah T. Hughes administered the oath of office to President Lyndon B. Johnson as Jackie Kennedy stood by his side. Dallas police, FBI, and Secret Service questioned Oswald for several hours after moving him back and forth along a crowded third-floor hallway. Just after midnight, and at the request of reporters, police made Oswald available in what turned into a brief press conference. Did you kill the president? No, I've not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. Uh, the first thing I heard about it was when the newspaper reporters in the hall uh, asked me that question. Ninety minutes later, at 1.30 Saturday morning, Oswald was formally charged with killing President Kennedy. Later that afternoon, just 24 hours after Oswald's arrest, police detective Will Fritz told reporters, Now I can tell you that this case is cinched, that this man killed the president. There, there is no question in, in my mind about it. We are convinced beyond any doubt that he did the killing. Questioning continued, and Oswald reacted to reporters. You find that rifle? What dispatches you people have been given, but I emphatically deny these charges. On Sunday morning, Dallas police prepared to transfer Oswald from the small city jail to the larger county jail. Despite full security, Dallas strip club owner Jack Ruby somehow got in and mingled with waiting reporters. Rushed to Parkland Hospital and operated on by some of the same doctors, 
Oswald died 48 hours and seven minutes after President Kennedy. While the nation watched on television, President John F. Kennedy was buried at 2.30 Monday afternoon Dallas time. In Fort Worth, reporters acted as pallbearers when only Oswald's family showed up and the accused assassin was laid to rest. Within a few minutes, Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett was buried too as local TV cameras looked on. <laughs> 